I've just been charging my camera battery. I haven't used my camera for months, so I've just been recording everything on my phone. But I thought I'll stop being lazy and actually use it for this video. <laughs> I forgot to record an intro for this video and now I've got an absolute stinking cold. So this is not ideal, but here we go. The video is a bit of a weird topic. It's about like semantics in recovery. So how we say things. Like one of the examples I give is like a healthy weight, which gets used all the time and people get set targets that are like healthy weights. But if they're not healthy for your body, then you will never recover at that supposedly healthy weight. So like, instead of that, I will now try and say like your natural weight or your body's unsuppressed weight. So it's like slight wording differences, but yeah, I do think it makes a big difference. But having said that, I think like you can't say things perfectly all the time. And if you try to, you literally never speak. And I get messages from people saying that like I've said things wrong or I've offended people with what I've said. But yeah, you can't get it perfect. And I've even like changed my mind with some of the things that I used to say and now I would say differently. And if I have ever said things wrong or offended people, like I'm really sorry. I guess we like grow and change and learn more as well. And like you learn different ways to say things and it can make a big impact on your recovery. So strange topic, but let's try. Right, we're just waiting on our lunch to arrive. We couldn't decide what to have today. Cheeseburger beagle, fuck's sake. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that looks really nice. Any salad with it? Yeah, and chicken Caesar salad. What is on the this? Side. Please choose bread. So in the end, we decided to share, and we've got a chicken Caesar salad and this like chicken quesadilla wrap thing. And I've just had my hair done this week. I'm just seeing like how blonde it is. And I also had like bangs cut in, which is the first time I've done that because my hair's gotten so long now. I was finding it was really like sticking to my face. So I've tried to like do this to give it a bit more volume. Oh, it's coming out. <laughs> Wait, let me actually put the lid on before I do this. What the hell? There we are. Wait, what is that? What is that? semantics which I know I will have said in the past and I'm really sorry if I've said this in videos like I wouldn't want to say this now is you will not get fat and looking at it now I feel like the problem with that is it's enforcing this idea that fat is bad or reinforcing a fear of weight gain and I really believe now like recovery is just about getting to the size that your body wants to be and that's your natural weight and the weight at which you can live your life freely without having like restrictions or impairments or having to sacrifice bits of you to control your body weight and you know to force it to be something that it doesn't want to be but really that's like your body's business I don't think anyone really gets a say in that like a doctor can't tell you what weight that's going to be or someone on Instagram can't or a YouTube video can't or a friend or a dietitian or even you yourself like no one can decide on your body's behalf what weight it wants to be or what its natural weight will be. So yeah, I'm sorry if I've said that in previous videos, like I used to say it to myself and I wouldn't want to say that now. And a similar saying, which I'm a bit more on the fence with, and I used to say it to myself, is you will not balloon. So an example, like I was really scared of eating immediately before I went to bed because I thought I was gonna gain loads of weight overnight. And so when I was challenging it, I'd say to myself like, come on Meg, you won't balloon if you do this. And then I'd have to do it to wake up in the morning and be like, oh yeah, nothing happened. This thing that I was scared of, that I would gain loads of weight overnight, like it didn't happen. And so objectively, that is factual. Like you don't balloon from eating something or eating right before you go to bed. But equally in saying like, oh, don't worry, this isn't gonna happen. It's still like enforcing that fear behind weight gain. And weight gain in recovery for a lot of people is a completely essential part. Like if your weight's suppressed, 
part of your recovery will be restoring your natural body weight and you will not be able to recover without it and then even beyond recovery like people gain weight <laughs> It just happens like at different points in life and it can't be something that we're living in fear of because then what are you going to do when it does happen like when you age or when you go through something like pregnancy or when just things change in your life like I guess I don't want to say things to other people or even to myself in my recovery that enforce this fear of like yeah weight gain is bad don't worry it's not going to happen like it might beyond recovery even like there are times in your life where you will gain weight so what <laughs> and I really think that so what is a much better message than don't worry, it won't happen. God forbid. <laughs> right, I've just come to get my car registered. It's something you have to do every year in Dubai. And I actually got a text from the police saying that I haven't registered my car in over a year even though I really remember going to do it last year, but I think somehow I must have not done it properly and now I'm really worried I'm gonna get a fine. And then I've actually turned up today and the place is closed. <laughs> Luckily there's a Starbucks drive through next door. So I went and picked up a mocha frappuccino instead, which is already separated actually. <laughs> Another thing which I used loads in my recovery and which I had to change how I was using it was live the life you want to live. Like for example, if you come to get your car registered and the place is closed, but Starbucks is next door, I wanna be able to spontaneously pick up a Frappuccino. But the problem I always had with the saying was every time I came to do the thing that I supposedly wanted to be able to do, I didn't wanna do it. And I'd be running through like, oh, but what have you had for a snack? What did you have for lunch? Oh, we're getting a takeaway later, so you need to free up the calories now to be able to have a takeaway. I just had all this like anxiety and worry in my head and all of these rules, which meant that even though it was the life I wanted to be able to live, like in that moment, I didn't wanna live it. I feel like that's so often the case with recovery. Like there's things that you wanna be able to do in like five years time or in a year's time, or even in a month's time, but you don't wanna do them today and you don't wanna do them tomorrow. Like maybe next week, I'll want to do it, but I don't wanna do it now. <laughs> but the problem is if you don't do it now, you'll get to next week and you still won't be able to do it because you'll still have all the same brain wiring, all the same rules, all the same fears. Like it's not gonna be any easier with time. If anything, it's just gonna be harder because you're enforcing all of these beliefs in your brain the more and more you like act on them. So I started realizing that I needed to like change the saying that I was using. I started saying, live the life you ultimately want to live. Then even if I didn't wanna do it, that day, I'd be like, right, but I'm not doing it because I want to do it now, I'm doing it because I ultimately want to be able to do it. And at some point, I'm gonna have to break the cycle of like not doing it, or I'll forever be in that cycle. It's kind of like stepping back and looking at the bigger picture and accepting like you're taking a bit of short-term pain or discomfort or anxiety now, so that in the long term, you won't have it. Like you're living the life you ultimately want to live, even if you don't wanna live it right now. And by the way, like it's totally normal that you don't wanna live it right now. Like you're going into these situations with eating disorder wiring still in your brain. So you'll never just want to do it. Like you're never gonna spontaneously want to do these things that go against your fears, but you have to force it anyway and do it anyway and feel shit and do it anyway because it's something you ultimately want to be able to do. I just took Bertie for a little walk and he's got this like best little dog friend. Actually, he's quite a big dog friend called Mango. He lives like a few houses down and we let them like have a little play together. And then the owners had just like cooked some food, some Arabic food, and they're like, oh, what are you doing for dinner tonight? And Bren's out. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I'll like get a takeaway. And they're like, oh, have some of this. So they've just popped some like chicken and rice in a Tupperware for me, which is great. So that's my dinner sorted. And to an outsider, that might seem like such a small freedom, but to me, to be able to just like take food unplanned from somebody else, not know what's in it and be like, great. And to like be grateful for it and not scared of it, like, oh, it's so nice. So I've made a little salad. I'm not even gonna heat it up. It's really hot in Dubai today. I just don't really fancy hot food right now. Which also obviously doesn't mean I need to restrict and eat like a shit salad <laughs> because I'm hot. So I've got some Arabic rice chickeny thing with a glass of wine, I'm just gonna sit and watch TV on my own, and that is just bliss. I should have made some sort of dressing, but I didn't really think that far ahead. So I'm just gonna make a little vinaigrette, but when I say make, I mean literally pour it from the bottle straight onto the salad. 
This is like the world's laziest vinaigrette. I'm sure it'll mix in when I eat. <laughs> This is exactly the sort of thing that I'd have had to have done at some point, thinking, live the life you ultimately want to live. Because I used to be terrified of like food prepared by other people and even of eating on my own if Brendan was out for an evening. But I knew I wanted to be able to do it. Like I wanted to just lie on the sofa with a glass of wine and a takeaway or like food prepared by a neighbor. I wanted to have that flexibility and independence with food. So at some point I'd have had to have done this kind of thing in my recovery even though I still had all of those fears in place and it felt absolutely awful. And in that moment, that would not have been the life I wanted to live at all. But that's when I'd have said to myself, like, live the life you ultimately want to live. And I guess now, like, I'm grateful to my past self for having done that. This is my camera, by the way. It's called an EOS M50 by Canon. Bertie's new home is lying in all my packing. <laughs> right, this video has taken me so long to make now, like honestly nearly a month. So I'm currently packing. We are off to Malta for 11 days on our way to the UK for my brother's wedding and my best friend's wedding. But this last week has been so crazy with trying to get stuff ready to go. And I've been like chasing around all of the police stations to sort my car out. And so I just haven't had time to finish this video. And I think I'm gonna have to finish it in Malta now. <laughs> made it to Malta. It is so early in the morning. I think it's like 7 a.m. and I'm already up, showered, I've had my breakfast. Bren was still in bed so I decided I'd just come out and have like a little explore on my own. Come down to the sea which is so nice. I feel like so much calmer when I'm down by the sea. And just being able to be outside like in Dubai it is so hot at the moment so yeah, I don't know what has happened in the last week, but like, it was just a shit show. <laughs> Everything just happened all at once and my work was so busy. But honestly, like my brain just felt like it was gonna explode. Like I just had far too many things in my head. Ugh, and now I feel like we can like breathe out now that we've actually got here. I actually didn't even get my car sorted in the end. I'm just gonna have to deal with that when I get back. But basically what had happened is I got a text from the police saying that my car wasn't registered. So I went to try and register it, but the registering people said they couldn't do it unless they'd had a service. And I was actually already booked in for a service on the Sunday because it was due and we're going away. So I was like, right, I'll get that done before we leave on the Thursday. So I went to try and get a service and they're like, we can't service your car unless you're insured. So I phoned up the insurance people and they were like, we can't insure your car unless it's registered <laughs> but the freaking registering people wouldn't register it without the service so i was just like driving around dubai phoning everybody like what is the way out of this and in the end the registering people did like a mini service for me which was enough for the insurers so then they insured me and then i could get the proper service at the audi garage so then i went back to try and register it which was the original thing that i was trying to do and there was this fine on my car which was like unpayable and it said i had to go to the police we looked this all up online and it was like if you've got an unpayable fine like the police will impound your car for a week give you loads of fines give you like four black points so i was like Fuck. And we were literally like leaving in two days at this point. So the fine that I'd incurred, I think it was like a speeding ticket. I hadn't even got it in Dubai, I'd got it in Ajman. But the Ajman police closed at 2.30 p.m. <laughs> and then we were leaving. So I was like, well, I don't even have time to fix it. But looking at it online, like we're gonna have to do it when we go back and yeah, they might impound my car for a week in Ajman, which is a right pain in the arse. I, whatever, I'll have to just deal with it when I get back. So yeah, I'm sorry this video has taken so insanely long to make, but <sighs> I just really couldn't cope with all that much stuff going on. So I'm going to be working for this like, what is it, 11 days we're here. And I will try to finish this video at some point whilst we're here. So funny, when we booked the room it said the balcony has city views. <laughs> we're like, well that's going to look out over a road. Right, I'm in our hotel room. Actually, it's an apartment. And I forgot to mention, if I'm talking a bit funny, it's because I've just had a brace put in. So it's like an Invisalign, but I do feel like it's making me like lisp a little bit. <laughs> right, another word that I'm really like conscious of how I use, and I think it can be like quite problematic in recovery, is healthy or a healthy weight. Like for example, if I said something like, 
you won't think about food when you're at a healthy weight. So that can so easily be misconstrued because on a BMI chart, there's these like technically healthy weights or a doctor might set you a target and be like, this is a healthy weight, but that's not to say that it's healthy for your body. And you could be at a technically healthy weight, but still be way below what is healthy for your body. And in that case, like you're still gonna think about food. You're still gonna have to engage in behaviors to maintain that weight because it's not healthy for your body. And you're still gonna have all the shit that goes along with an eating disorder because you're not really healthy. Like your body's not a BMI chart. Your body doesn't even know what a BMI chart is. Like your body just knows what is healthy for your body. So now instead of saying like a healthy weight, I try to say your body's natural weight or your body's unsuppressed weight. Basically to refer to the weight that you can exist at naturally and effortlessly without having to engage in like weight controlling behaviors like restricting your food, excessively exercising, just like planning or controlling anything like calories or macros or anything. Because if you're engaging in any of those behaviors to be at the weight you're at, like that is not the way your body is supposed to be. Even if it's technically a healthy weight, like it's not your healthy weight. And each person's healthy weight is so individual. Like I could be at the same BMI as somebody else, which is technically healthy, and they could exist absolutely fine there. Whereas for me, I would be like restricted and controlled and eating disordered. So I just don't know if we can really say like a healthy weight, like it's not for us to decide, it's for your body. Right, it's about 8 a.m. I have just come down to the sea before I start working. There's actually loads of people swimming, which looks so nice. So I think I might come and do that tomorrow before work. I try to like get up, have breakfast, get out and do something before I start, just so I'm not like, ah, <laughs> bug. So I'm not like in the apartment all day whilst friends like are out by the pool and stuff. And I also try to take a break in the day to go up to the pool with him for a little bit. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, another bit of wording, which I'm like conscious of how I use in recovery is when I say like unrestricted eating and someone actually messaged me about it recently and they're like, why do you promote unrestricted eating when you were on a meal plan and you never ate unrestricted? Like it was actually a lot ruder than that, but it was a fair point. It just could have been said a bit nicer. But anyway, <laughs> I totally take the point that if your treatment program uses like a meal plan, that's not really unrestricted eating because it's a very structured like three meals, three snacks. It's not necessarily responding to like your full extreme hunger or all your mental hunger or eating all the time, which is kind of what you wanna do when you're in recovery. So it's a bit more of like a controlled recovery, I guess. And it's like controlled exposure to fear foods and eating more and gaining weight and whatever. Whereas there's other approaches which are more like all in. Things like Tabitha Farrar really promotes that. I think, is it Stephanie Butterworth or somebody who's on YouTube and she like tracked her journey doing all in. And honestly, I think that's great. Like if people can do it and fully jump in and respond to their hunger cues, let their body do what it needs to do with weight gain. Like, I honestly think that's brilliant. Like, go for it, because that is your body healing itself. Like, all of the mental hunger and everything that you get in recovery is because your body is saying, like, I need food, I want to eat. I think my worry with it is more like, if people freak out doing that. So if you like, go for a day of like, I'm fully gonna listen to my hunger and eat everything that I want, all of my cravings, mental hunger and everything. But then the next day, freak out about that. And then you're like, oh my God, now I need to restrict to make up for what I've done yesterday. Or if you like gain weight or feel your clothes getting tighter, you're growing out of clothes and then you freak out and so compensate for that. Like all in is great, but not if you react to it. And if you compensate for having respected your body, you're just gonna be doing like a yo-yo recovery of like toe dipping all in, running back to your eating disorder when you freak out, giving it another go, running back to your eating disorder. And if that's the case, then maybe for you, a more controlled like meal plan approach would be better. But either way, like whatever path you take to get there, I feel like the ultimate goal has to be unrestricted eating. Like whether you arrive there from fully jumping in or doing it in a more controlled meal plan fashion, like ultimately, like for me anyway, the goal is to like be able to eat at any time of day, any amount, whatever you fancy, take food if it's offered to you and not be like, oh, but it's not a snack time. It's not a meal time. It's the wrong time of day to be eating or I've already had this in the day or I'm having that later. Like that shit is not unrestricted eating. <laughs> All right, I did have another couple, but this video is far too long already and it's taken me way too long to make. So I'm just gonna post it as is. We're heading home on Monday, it's Saturday today. So I've just had another negative COVID test, my third, even though I sound like this. Right, I'll try and post another video in the next few weeks, but lots of love.